Hey there Dev Squad Fertis here and welcome back to my C++ Fundamentals course. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can compile our code using Visual Studio and we're also going to be taking a look at some of the associated settings for the way that it's going to be built and last but not least, we are going to be showing you the error list and the output log and how you can use it to pick up errors when you are writing your code. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the video. Okay, so now we're inside of Visual Studio, we can start to break down the compiling and building process, because computers in itself do not inherently understand C++. You have to turn all of this, your C++ code, into binary, which is ones and zeros, which is what your computer is going to understand. And to be able to do that, you first and foremost need to compile your code, which is going to turn it into an object, and then you need to build it, which is essentially going to take all of those objects objects, put them together and turn it into a executable file containing the binary which your computer is going to be able to understand. And hopefully that is a good understanding into the whole process and what's going to go down. Now you don't need to understand this 100% as we're going to be going through this process step by step as part of this video. So let's go ahead and move into it. The first thing that we need to do then is to create the objects for each of our C++ files and that is done through compiling. The way that we're going to compile this is really simple. All we're going to do is press Ctrl and F7. And if you take a look at the bottom here, it is going to compile that C++ file. So build started, vertuscourse.cpp, and that file in particular has now been compiled. And with that done, if we go ahead and open the folder in the file explorer, in our solution explorer that is, go into x64, debug, we now have an object file. And that object file is generated from the C++ file that you currently have open. So each of our C++ files are going to have different objects and we need to link them together. And the way you're going to do that is by using the build process. Now, before I show you the build process, what I'm going to do is simply take a moment to show you how to add a button to your user interface, which is going to compile for you instead of you having to press the keyboard shortcut, because some people just don't do well with keyboard shortcuts. To add that compile button, all you need to do is go to our button here, the drop down in the top of our menu strip, add or remove buttons, go to customize, add a command, go to build, scroll down, go to compile, press OK. Once we've done this, close it. And as you can see at the top here, we now have a button for compiling. And that is all we've got to do for compiling our code. It's very, very simple. Now to build this and link all of our objects together, it is even simpler. All we've got to do is right click on our project in the solution explorer and press build. And then notice at the bottom here, it is going to say build started. It has taken our project file and turns that into an executable file, which is our binary. And it's also given you the directory to find that. So we can go ahead and open this, right click Vertus course, open the file location again, and then we're going to go to this directory. So the main Vertus course x64, which is our output debug. And as you can see here, we have now got our execution file. Open this up. And what you're going to notice is in your taskbar, it's going to show for just a split second, but you're not going to see it on the screen. The reason for that is because our code here is being written. And the reason for that is because our code here is being read by the computer. But once it's read it and it's executed that code, it's going to close the application. So what we need to do is simply put a command in here, which is going to tell it to wait out. So what we're going to do is STD colon colon, and then CIN dot get use the brackets because that is a function that is coming from IO stream. And then we're going to use the semicolon to end off that statement, just like that. Now, don't worry if you don't know what this code means, we will explain this as we go deeper into the course. But if we go ahead and build that now, and then if we go and open up that file location again, into here, 
Virtus Course, X64, Debug, and open up that application, you can now see we have got our code on the screen from the print string, essentially. And we have our very first application that can be run by other users. And this is a massive milestone in your programming career. This is your first application. So you now should have a better understanding of why you need to compile, why you need to build, and the end result and all of that good stuff. So with that all done now, what we're gonna do is simply go through some of the different settings that you have available to you for changing for that compiling and building process. So what we're gonna do is take a look up here. We've got our debug mode, our release mode, and our platform. With this, we are currently using the debug mode. That is our active solution configuration. And that is something I want you to keep in mind. With that in mind, we're gonna to go to our solution explorer. We're going to right click and we're gonna to go to properties. Inside of here, we have all of our configuration properties for compiling and building. For the ones related to building, that is going to be underneath our configuration properties, and this is gonna be inside of general, advanced, debugging, and our directories. The main ones you wanna concern yourself with are the stuff in general. So we've got our output directory, which is where our executable file is going to go, our target name, which is essentially the name of the application. You've also got your configuration type. In this case, it's going to be a .exe. You've also got a .dll and a .library. We're going to be taking a look at that later on in the course. But for now, we've got an executable file. And then we've also got our SDK version, which is Windows 10. So that is the main settings that you want to concern yourself when it comes to building. We also have some compiler settings that we can change. And this is all going to be underneath C slash C++. Inside of here, we've got all manner of different settings related to optimization, preprocessor stuff, precompiled headers, advanced optimization, all sorts. And there is lots and lots of different options here. And there is no point of me going through these one by one and telling you exactly what they're going to do. As most of these, you're not actually going to need to use. So having said that, what we're going to do as we go through the course and build applications, we are going to be showing you the ones as and when you need them. But for now, we are going to leave the settings as is. Now, one thing I do want to have you keep in mind is the settings at the top are the ones you're actually going to be changing. So as you can see, I'm currently in debug mode, but my configuration is set to release. If you were to change your release settings, you would not see those when you build because you are in that debugging mode already. So do keep that in mind. If you're trying to change the release settings, make sure you go out of this and change your configuration mode into that release setting there. But for now, we are just going to use the debugging settings. So with all of that done now, what we're going to do is take a look at some simple error reporting, because sometimes when you compile and build your code, it doesn't go 100% to plan. Sometimes there's some issues. So what we're going to do is simulate a syntax error. To simulate this syntax error, what we're going to be doing is simply getting rid of the semicolon here, and we are going to be showing you what happens to our Visual Studio interface and how we can combat simple mistakes like this. So now we've taken away that semicolon, it is not going to know exactly what you're trying to do. It is going to expect a semicolon. So there is going to be a syntax error. If we go ahead and build our project, take a look down at the bottom left here, you can see it has opened up our error list and it is showing us there is an error on line 11 in VertusCourse.cpp as part of this project and a brief description of what's going on. Visual Studio is going to pick up simple code errors like this, which is really, really great. Now, one thing you do want to bear in mind is this is not going to pick up logic errors, which is essentially where you've told it to do something you don't want it to do. A computer is going to do exactly as you tell it. So we have got our error list for simple errors there. We've also got our output log, which is simply going to give us similar information, or rather the entire information. The error list is going to be a more concise version of that, whereas the output is going to give you all of the information related to this. So, 
we have got a syntax error missing a semicolon on line 11 as part of function 7. And that is just before that. So we've got a little bit more information here, which is great. However, this output log is also going to show you all of the other information regarding to build information. So it is very easy to lose little error reports as part of that output log there. So it's very good to have that error list. Anyway guys, that is absolutely everything that I wanted to show you in terms of compiling and building as part of this video. You've got some basic error reporting and you know how to change some of the settings too. We've still got more that we need to show you in the way of debugging, which is going to play into the error side of things. But for now guys, that is absolutely everything. As usual, move on to the next video. Stay awesome, keep creating. Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.